this project starts out just like all of the other ones inside of SketchUp. Most of the time I don't do like a full 100% finished product in SketchUp because a lot of it I can do in real life. I had some scrap pieces of 8 quarter white oak. That means I'm going to have to resaw these on the table saw, which I really don't like to do. But sometimes you got to do what you don't like to do. Resawing on the table saw is actually kind of dangerous and it's a waste of material. I'm going to be flattening one face and one edge and then I'm going to be cutting it to its rough width so make it a little bit wider than it's going to be in the end so that way I don't have so much material to have to resaw, especially on the table saw because my table saw is not very powerful. Look Seth, I hate to be that guy, but I just saw that bag in your dust collector, it was completely full. You're going to have to change that. So before I get to resawing here, I make sure that I change out to my thin kerf blade so that way I'm not wasting as much material because I don't have much to work with. You have to be careful sometimes on the table saw when resawing because the board can actually pinch the blade and in this case this is what was happening with me and taking multiple passes like I'm doing in the video is kind of my solution for that but what ended up happening was it would bow those boards kind of bad and I wouldn't be able to get my 20 mil thickness that I wanted. So generally speaking you want to buy um, rough lumber that's close to your final dimension so if I wanted 20 mil I'd probably get you know four quarter instead of having to resaw eight quarter. Just a little tip there. Why would you put those boards there? They can fall off into the blade. God, what a stupid thing to do. Now that I have all of the pieces dimensioned, we are going to be orientating these boards to where I get the nicest grain and whatnot, and then we are going to be laying out for the joinery. Now I've got all the boards where I kind of like them, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them together and then I'm going to add my triangle. I know you guys can't see this, but I'll show you. So I add my triangle here, and it points up to the top. And for this one, I do it this way. And that points to the top right here. So that way I know which way these boards are orientated. And also, I add a little line right here to the top and I will do it on these boards as well and that will indicate um, this is case one and this will be case two so that way I know which way these boards go now that I've got everything ready to go what I'm gonna do is take the dimensions that I have on my phone and my marking gauge and digital calipers and we're going to be laying out for the mortises and tenons.
Now that I have all the tenon links put on the styles and I have the mortise locations on the rails, we are now ready to actually lay out the tenon. So let's go ahead and do that now. Look at me, a real woodworker. Why do I always gotta do things the hard way? How many more of these I gotta do? That's it. I'm using pocket holes. So after we have the tenons cut, and they will look a little something like this, nice and clean, I'll cut with the handsaw and the chisels. Next step, obviously, is to cut the mortises. I'll be doing that with my mortising machine, but I won't be going all the way to the lines with the mortising machine. I will get close and then I will come back with the chisel to come down to the baseline to make sure I get an absolute perfect fit. Now that I got the inside faces of the mortises cut, I'm gonna chisel to the base lines here and then I'm just gonna finish cutting out from the face side so that way I can get absolutely perfect lines on the uh, actual face that you will see so that way when the tenons come through, it'll be just absolutely perfect. That's the plan at least, we'll see how it goes. Now that I've got all the mortises cut, we are going to be test fitting this. Um, as you can see, I've already put together one of them and I've put together the bottom of this one. And uh, I, they fit together perfect without any pairing after the fact. So um, let's try it out here, see if it'll do okay. Fully seated, fully seated. So look at that joinery. Super crisp. Now that we've got them put together, we now have to take them apart, which is gonna be an absolute challenge. But once we do that, we're gonna be laying out for the rabbit or the rebate for the back panel, then we're gonna make the back panel. And I'm gonna figure out some really cool way to keep the back panel in there without using nails or screws. I think you guys are gonna really like it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do that. So in Tennessee, it likes to go from 70 degrees down to 30, back to 70, down to 30. And we are now in 30 right now. And it is very cold in the shop, mainly because I'm too lazy to insulate. Also, if you see these lines in the background on the wall, that's coming in the video. That's because the refresh rate with these lights and my camera, they don't mix, they don't like each other. So when you, whenever I get a light color in the, in the shot, you'll see lines that go through it and that's uh, very annoying and there's nothing really I can do about it until I get new lights in the shop. So if you've ever watched my videos and saw those lines, that's why. But anyway, ran into a problem with the design of this uh, display case and I should have known because the last display case I made for the Harry Potter wand case, I ran into the same problem. So when I go ahead and cut the rabbit in the back here of the rebate, it's going to cut a big chunk 
out of this tenon. That is obviously no good because that is going to interfere with the wedge that goes pretty much all the way down to the bottom. That's going to break that piece off, which is obviously not what I want. Also, it's going to make that tenon a whole lot weaker. Not that it really matters because one tenon is definitely going to be strong enough for this display case. I'm back to the drawing board and I think I figured out a new way to attach this back panel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut the groove for the glass front and then I'm going to figure out the distance that I need for the back panel to actually sit in here and the, the way that I'm going to attach it from the back. You guys will see that later. It'll make a little more sense. And then I'm going to do a miter here on the inside with maybe walnut and have like a little frame that sits on the inside that that back panel can sit up against. Hopefully that makes sense. I like that idea for two reasons. One, it's easier and another, it's going to look really good to have an interior of walnut. It's just going to be a nice little contrast. And that is also a really good way to have a nice strong uh, place for that back panel to sit. And I'm going to add these little pieces. I'm going to mortise little pieces in here that stick in that hold this back panel in place. It's going to be super cool. Um, as you know, I don't like to use nails or screws, so that is a good solution for that. Anyway, next step, we're going to be cutting the glass uh, groove. So we'll do that on the table saw. And as you can tell, I got them apart. Um, there's enough room in here for me to get my rubber mallet in there to hit them apart. So that's what we're going to do next. Let's continue on. I'm going to figure out how big I need this glass panel to be. So it's looking like 19 3 quarters by 8 and a quarter. So 19 3 quarters by 8 and a quarter. You might be thinking, Seth, don't you use millimeters? Yes, but Lowe's does not. So that's where we're going to go next. We're going to go get the glass panel from Lowe's. So let's go do that. Lowe's glass cutter never seems to work, so we'll see. Also gave the shade. Okay, so bad news, of course, as I said, their glass cutter did not work, and they actually sell glass cutters, but they never have them in stock, so um, we're going to have to figure something else out. Luckily, I have a few scrap pieces of glass from previous projects and I will be able to size the groove to fit the piece of glass that I'm eventually going to get. So um, I guess that's the route that I'm going to go down. All right, guys, so we're back in the shop. I've just put in my circular saw blade, which is really, really thin. It is actually thinner than the thickness of the glass. The reason I want that is so I can take multiple passes on that groove, so that way I get a perfect fit, and it's just nice and snug. I don't want there to be any slop in the glass because I'm not going to add any glue, and I don't want it to be uh, kind of rattling around in there. So it would turn out that I'm an idiot and made two huge mistakes on both of the cases. Um, I accidentally cut this groove that was supposed to be stopped right here in the middle of the mortise. I ended up going all the way through because I have lines on my fence where I stop and start and I was looking at the back line instead of the front and I ended up going all the way through. Very, very dumb mistake, but as you can see, this is how I'm fixing it. I've just got like a little spline that I filled that gap with, super simple. And this one was an even bigger mistake. I, I forgot I moved the fence when I was setting those lines and I made the cut and it was way, way too close to the end. So what I decided I was gonna do is just rip it off, glue another piece of white oak to the front here and just flush it up and then make the thickness back to where it should be. And that is how I fixed both of those issues. Um, problems come and you just gotta learn how to fix them. That's one of the biggest things in woodworking. So this was my solution to both of those. I wish it didn't happen, but it did. Um, so got it fixed though. So now that we have the grooves cut for the glass, the glass is fit in there pretty nice. The next thing we need to do is make the back panel out of maple. Hopefully I have enough maple to do that. And then we will make the interior pieces out of walnut and then uh, we'll go from there.
so I guess it's snowing now. I think three days ago it was 70 degrees. Um, yeah, Tennessee makes no sense. It's way too early for this. I need coffee. You know what? I'm not a big fan of McDonald's, but they have some pretty good coffee. Again, I'm sorry about the flickering lights. These fluorescent lights do not like my camera at all. I just cut down these strips of walnut on the table saw. These are gonna be the interior pieces for the case. I wanna get these down to 10 mil by 35 mil in the width, and then I will play with the miters for the length. I went ahead and milled these pieces off camera. Uh, it was really simple, just ran it through the joiner, ran it through the thickness planer, and cut them to length on the table saw. We will be cutting the miters on these on camera, so that's what we're gonna do after we glue together the actual cases. I've got to get the glass installed before I can put these in because I will be gluing these and butting them up against the glass to make sure I get them exactly where I want them. So I'm going to have to wait.
So now it is time to stamp my logo into the back panel here. And I'm gonna do that by burning it on here. And I'm actually going to be using my stove. That's why we're inside right now. And I don't have a way to heat it out in the shop. So uh, yeah, it's the easiest way. As you can tell here, I lied about what I was going to do with the back panel. I wanted to do something maybe a little more simple, and uh, this is kind of what I came up with. I've done this a long time ago on a project that I did when I first started, and I really liked it, so I incorporated the same thing in this project. Guys, I want to thank you so much for making it this far into this almost 30 minute long video. It is greatly appreciated. If you really enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Share it with your friends if you think they might enjoy it as well. And uh, I know these videos take me a long time to make. Usually it's like a month. You know, woodworking takes a while. But editing these videos takes a while as well. And also recording the videos takes a while. So uh, thank you guys for sticking around. And I will see you in the next one.